51, verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And the willing spirit to sustain me is actually God's spirit sustaining me. This is about what happens after sin has been dealt with. This is about what it's like, the joy of reconciliation, of making up after, after uh, the relationship has broken down. David sees sin as a blemish in the relationships, something that's evil in your sight, O oh Lord, that stops the free flow of love between creator and creature. And in the King James Version, Verse 12 goes like this, Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. And that's actually a literal translation of the Hebrew. Isn't that interesting? And thy free spirit can also be translated thy princely spirit, thy royal spirit. Which makes you think of David being the, the king, you know, and he has... Uh, a position and he has authority and reputation and all of a sudden all that stuff has gone and he's now saying give me back the joy of being who I really am a prince with you and remember that's one of the meanings of the word Israel is a prince with God you know a mighty man with God which is a powerful thing so David understands sin as a breakdown in that relationship and he now starts to think about the other side what does it look like when that relationship is back on track and the result of restoration is liberty. It's a free spirit, a princely spirit, walking around like kings. Paul said, you reign in life, unconstrained. And of course, James called it the royal law of liberty. Isn't that great? The royal law of liberty. As a believer, why do I do the things that I do? Is it because I'm cautious about gaining heaven? and avoiding hell. <laughs> is, is that why? Is it just a matter of rewards and punishments? Or is it something else? You see, it's just quite not, not good enough. If you went to AA meetings and they told me about the evils of drink or the dangers of cirrhosis of the liver, or they said if you spend all your money on alcohol, your family might go into breakdown or, or poverty. And these are all good reasons, aren't they, to avoid drunkenness and alcohol addiction. I hope you think so. And so in the same way, if you say salvation is personal happiness and damnation is personal misery and that goodness consists of going for one and avoiding the other, it's still the religion of a Pharisee. It's laws and rules and regulation. It's still religion. And David is talking about something qualitatively different. He's saying, when I sin, it screws up my love for you. It injures me, and I know it injures you. And when that relationship is put back, he's not talking about avoiding hell or avoiding pitfalls. He's talking about embracing the, the loving father who's reaching out for him. And religion of rules is a poor dwarfish, stunted thing, unless it's real relationship. It's kind of self-conscious, it's kind of painful, it's a bit embarrassing. It ends up with people worrying whether they're saved or not, instead of seeking the God of their salvation. That's the difference that David really reaches for. That's why this is such a, a high point in, in the Old Testament, because there you see it. You see it, it just kind of lurches out of the darkness like a shining light out of a cellar. You think, that's what it is, the joy of your salvation. It's not a matter of, oh, how many sins have I committed, and you know, ticking them off on a sheet. It's knowing God. It's a personal relationship that has gone wrong and is put right here. David isn't seeking insurance about a distant happiness. He's not that self-centred. If you tell me, on the other hand, that God is love, that right is right, that wrong is wrong, if then you begin to love God from wherever you are, then that free spirit begins, the law of liberty begins, and 
David starts to dance. He says, oh, zip my lips, Lord, that I might sing. Take me into the temple. He starts to see the whole temple coming alive with reality. He said, then the walls of Jerusalem will be built up. Then they'll offer bulls on the altar. He says, what's going on on the inside is going to be recreated on the outside. My society will function properly once I function properly. Do you see it? It's a wonderful, wonderful truth. Fear never creates holiness. Love creates holiness. Fear shackles my conscience. David is saying, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I might see you. Open the windows too, Lord. Let the wind blow in. And really, in this psalm, David, once again, it happens in many psalms, he starts off in abject misery and he ends up dancing. And it's like he's figuring it out and he's looking into the Lord and then he starts to dance. And that is the joy of your salvation. That's the joy of walking with Jesus. Amen. God bless you.